Let's look at an example of inference for two variances. Here we'll look at an example of a confidence interval and a hypothesis test based on the assumption of normally distributed populations. Here's the example we'll look at. Researchers investigated differences in the physical characteristics of male and female lizards of the species Phrynocephalus frontalis from samples drawn in Inner Mongolia. This is a small lizard found in arid regions in Asia. The researchers sampled 44 adult female and 22 adult males of this species by capturing them by hand or with a noose and took several measurements of physical characteristics. One characteristic was the tail length, and that's what we'll look at in this video. Here are box plots of the tail lengths in millimeters for the 44 females and 22 male lizards in the study. There appears to be a difference in the mean tail length between the sexes. The males look to have longer tails on average. That comparison was one of the points of interest for the researchers. But in this video, we are going to investigate a possible difference in the variances. Judging by the spread of the box plots, the variability of the tail length appears to be similar for males and females. And if we calculate the sample variances using our usual formula, we end up with sample variances of 13.377 mm squared and 12.141 mm squared. There doesn't appear to be much of a difference in the variances, but let's see what a formal statistical analysis has to say. In this video, we will construct a 95% confidence interval for sigma 1 squared over sigma 2 squared, the ratio of population variances and we'll carry out a hypothesis test of equality of variances. Here are the assumptions of the two sample inference procedures for variances that we're about to use. We require simple random samples from the populations of interest, but in this example, this assumption is not met. We would likely consider the populations of interest to be adult males and adult females of this type of lizard in the geographical area under study. The researchers obtained samples by capturing lizards by hand or by noose, and the samples are not truly simple random samples from the populations. Biases could easily have been introduced. For example, it's certainly conceivable that smaller lizards would be harder to catch, or perhaps larger lizards are harder to catch. Or possibly the researchers were trying to get a mix of small and large lizards. These types of things could easily introduce bias. This might be less of an issue here because we are comparing two groups, so sometimes biases can cancel out in a sense, but it could still be a problem. That doesn't mean we just throw up our hands and say we can't do anything. We can still carry out the procedures, we should just be a little cautious with our conclusions and simply be aware that biases could have been introduced. The second assumption is that we need the populations to be normally distributed. This is very important in these inference procedures for variances, as the methods can work very poorly for some violations of the normality assumption. So let's investigate that by taking a look at the normal quantile quantile plots. Here are the normal quantile quantile plots for males and females. And recall that if the data is approximately normally distributed, the points on a normal quantile quantile plot fall close to a straight line. For the female lizards, the plot is looking pretty good. These small tail lengths over on the left are perhaps not as small as we'd expect under normality, but I don't think that's a big problem. For the male lizards, there's a bit of an unusual hump in the middle, which has a bit of an inchworm vibe to it, which isn't something we often see. It looks a little strange, and there's definitely some evidence of non-normality. But there don't seem to be major problems like heavy tails or extreme outliers, which are the biggest problems for variances. This type of plot should give us some pause, but I'd say that we can use the F procedures if, again, we are a little cautious with our conclusions. Here's the appropriate formula for a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for the ratio of population variances. We could choose any confidence level here, but I'm going to choose a 95% confidence level, so alpha is 0.05 and alpha over 2 is 0.025. This is our formula for a 95% confidence interval for the ratio of population variances. We get f sub 0.975 and f sub 0.025 from the f distribution with the appropriate degrees of freedom. For our data, the sample size in group 1 was 44, and for group 2 it was 22. So we need to find these f values from the f distribution with 43 and 21 degrees of freedom. 
And here's the f distribution with those degrees of freedom. f sub 0.025 is the f value with an area to the right of 0.025, and f sub 0.975 is the f value with an area to the left of 0.025. If we go to software or an f table, we can find that those values are, to three decimal places, 0.494 and 2.233. If you're having trouble finding those values, I have videos outlining how to find them. So those values go into the formula, and we end up with this. The sample variances were 13.377 and 12.141. We put those into the formula, S1 squared over S2 squared, and we end up, in the end, with a confidence interval of 0.49 to 2.23. And so we can be 95% confident that sigma 1 squared over sigma 2 squared lies between 0.49 and 2.23. In other words, we can be pretty confident that sigma 1 squared, which represents the true variance of tail lengths for female lizards, lies between roughly one half of sigma 2 squared and double sigma 2 squared where sigma 2 squared is the true variance of tail lengths for male lizards. And this applies only to the particular species of lizard that we sampled. An important point to note here is that this interval contains 1, and thus it is plausible that sigma 1 squared over sigma 2 squared equals 1. So this interval doesn't give any evidence of a difference in population variances. That shouldn't be too surprising, since the sample variances were so close. But if we are interested in investigating whether there is a difference in variances, we can also carry out a formal hypothesis test. We have a pretty good idea of what the results will be based on this interval, but let's go ahead and carry out the test. Here are the sample variances and sample sizes, and let's test the null hypothesis that the population variances are equal against the two-sided alternative that they are different. A two-sided alternative hypothesis is appropriate here, as we're interested in a difference in either direction. Under normality, the appropriate f-test statistic is the ratio of sample variances. And if the null hypothesis is true, and the populations are normally distributed, this test statistic has an f-distribution with n1-1 and n2-1 degrees of freedom. The observed value of the test statistic is 13 0.377 over 12.141, which, to three decimal places, works out to 1.102. Now we're going to get the p-value. Here are the hypotheses and the value of the test statistic, and I'm plotting in the f-distribution with the appropriate degrees of freedom. The observed value of the test statistic falls right here on this distribution. And we can tell right away that the f-test statistic falls near the middle of the distribution, so there isn't going to be any evidence against the null hypothesis. But we should get the appropriate p-value that we can report in our write-up. For this two-sided alternative hypothesis, the p-value is double the area to the left or right of the test statistic, whichever is smaller. If we go to software, we can find that the area to the right of the test statistic is 0.42, and the area to the left is 0.58. So the p-value is double 0.42, which is 0.84. If we didn't have access to software and we had to use an f-table, we couldn't find the exact p-value, but we could tell that the p-value is large. 0.84 is a very large p-value, giving absolutely no evidence against the null hypothesis. But what does that mean in the context of this problem? It means there is no evidence, based on this large p-value of 0.84, of a difference between males and females in the variance of their tail lengths, for this species of lizard, in the area of the study. We could also report the 95% confidence interval of 0.49 to 2.23. A couple of cautions to finish. Recall again that these lizards were captured in the wild by hand or by noose and biases could easily have been introduced by the method of sampling. And these F procedures for variances can work very poorly when the normality assumption is violated. So it's reasonable to carry out the analysis we just did, and it's certainly informative, but it probably wouldn't be wise to be overly confident in our conclusions.